Because combat is as traumatic uh, as it is and as frightening as it is, a lot of guys come back with uh, PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. Our vision is that every veteran who comes back has help available to him in some, in some way, shape, or form, uh, if, uh, housing or counseling or whatever, but that they come back, they are, they are acknowledged, and uh, they are offered the help that they need in order to move on with their lives. My father was Gregory Peck. My favorite film of his, uh, probably is a favorite of everyone's, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, that was him at his most natural and, and his most powerful. The moral authority that he showed in that film was really extraordinary. In 1966, I got a draft notice um, over the summer. And uh, there isn't a draft today, but in those days, uh, you were called and you had to go. Uh, I was given a college deferment so I could complete my college education, but the Army said as soon as you graduate, you belong to Uncle Sam. I didn't want to go to Vietnam. I was fearful. I, I was having nightmares before I went. Being in combat, in, in any combat anywhere, is, um, uh, it's, a very, uh, it's a very fearful place. You really have to um, harden yourself uh, emotionally to, to tolerate what you're going to see, and you, and you do. I realized that I, that I hadn't had thought very little of home. I, had, I was a 20-year-old guy. I had not th thought of women. You know, I mean, sex leaves your, leaves your consciousness. You're just you're so focused on uh, staying alive and keeping those people around you alive. It's, uh, it, it, was a little, it was a little scary how, how uh, hard you get. After I got back from Vietnam, I uh, handled it by a pretty much avoiding it. I didn't talk about it. I didn't, I didn't talk to other veterans. Um, I, I, my w way to uh, handle it was to simply shut the door. I probably had PTSD to some extent, didn't know that. Um, was having trouble kind of focusing and uh, moving forward, having difficulty envisioning a, uh, a future for myself. Kind of by chance in, in the mid 80s that I ran into a group of uh, uh, veterans and I just discovered that a lot of the feelings that they were talking about I had. And, it, and it, that was a revelation to me. I, because I said I had shut the door. So that they were talking about things that were inside my head was pretty um, revealing. So that was kind of the beginning of a of a long, long uh, process that I went through to really let it out. There was a lot of mental illness, a lot of combat trauma among Vietnam veterans, and a lot of them were not uh, handling it well, and, and a lot of them were committing suicide. Um, many, many, many more than uh, actually died in the war. I think I, I'd heard over 100,000, 58,000 died in the war, and, uh, and I'd heard over 100,000 died of suicide. It's really important for us to, to recognize uh, how um, uh, war affects people, and it's going on today. Combat trauma causes a, a variety of reactions in people once they return to the states. Um, Hypervigilance, um, you're constantly aware of things because you've been in, in a fearful state for so long, you get vigilant of every, of every movement, of every sound. Guys like to sit in restaurants with their back to the wall, so no one, I still have the startle reflex. I don't like people coming up behind me. It causes anxiety, depression, uncontrollable anger. Guys come back and they get in fights with their wives, they yell at their parents, they have a hard time uh, focusing because it's these intrusive thoughts that you, you simply can't get rid of keep coming into your mind. You're really, your psyche just doesn't know how to handle it, so there is a lot of unwanted uh, uh, reaction to that and they simply can't kind of get through the day and focus on anything. It, it's, it's, uh, their mind is, is constantly distracted. It can be extraordinarily disruptive. It can cause uh, their families to kick them out of the house, their wives to divorce them. It, uh, some treat it with alcohol and drugs. So it can really have a, a, a destructive effect on uh, people. In the Vietnam era, we weren't seeing guys for seven or eight years afterward. Now we're seeing guys as 
soon as three to six months after they get back. Uh, and some in the reserves are, are still in the reserves and, and they're having severe PTSD and they're having problems with their, uh, uh, with their parents and a bunch of them are sleeping in their cars. Southern California has the dubious distinction of being the capital of uh, homelessness. In 89, I got the opportunity to make a film about the combat experience called Heart of the Warrior. These guys talk very honestly about their experience. and It's a relief for a combat veteran with PTSD to hear about someone else with common feelings and, and emotions. It, it, it lets you know that you're not the only one that has that kind of reaction to your combat experience. Seeing it with other people showed me that uh, people could be helped by such a film. And, and once you start um, uh, helping people, it's, it's, it's hard to stop. After I'd made this film, I actually started a nonprofit and began focusing on helping homeless veterans groups. I'm now the uh, president and CEO of uh, US Vets, and we provide uh, housing and a variety of services, particularly employment and counseling services for homeless veterans. Since we started, the homeless veteran population in America has about been cut in half. US Vets started with a single facility uh, in Inglewood, uh, California uh, in 1993. At this point, we have grown to uh, 10 facilities. Uh, we have about 2,100 uh, guys sleeping in our beds tonight. Sadly, uh, there's, there's a need because there's well over 100,000 veterans who are still homeless. Uh, the family population among all homeless and among homeless veterans is growing faster than any other population, largely women with children because the, the number of women that are being deployed. 14% uh, of the people in the military are, are female and women who have uh, combat trauma and military sexual trauma uh, and, and have children. So that's a, very, that's a very complicated case to deal with. And so we've just started a program at our Long Beach site uh, for women with children so that the, the women, while they're going through the rehabilitation that they need uh, to go through, don't have to separate from their children. Really, I feel like we've been able to uh, lead the way in many instances to provide new services for veterans and that's, that's that's pretty thrilling, that's pretty great. Linda Miles is one of our really extraordinary stories. She was addicted, uh, was bipolar, uh, had been on the street on and off for, for several years and finally decided to, to make the move to, to come in. That's always a great moment when, they, when, they, when it kind of clicks and they say, okay, you know, I, my life really has, has hit bottom, I can do something better with my life. And so after she went through our program, she came, she stayed with us as a volunteer and then as an employee, and she went on to get her, both her bachelor's and master's degree and is now on our board of directors. There is a lot of stigma against admitting that they have combat trauma. There is certainly a reluctance to revisit it. It is such a painful experience. So like I did, they want to come back, shut the door and move on with their lives. And our job in this new program, I think for everyone is to convince them that uh, it, is, it, is, it is really important for them to address this issue now, to begin to talk about it and to normalize it because if they don't, it can come back in so many negative ways. And uh, that's what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to uh, avoid these guys tumbling over the next four or five, six years and, and becoming homeless and losing their jobs and losing their families. Uh, if we can get to them, get them to talk about it, get them to admit that they have a problem and deal with a problem, then they're going to be a lot better off than they, than they will be if they don't address it. Hope, I think, is a, a future that you look forward to. So many of the guys that, uh, that we encounter really are living uh, just day to day. They don't, they don't know what's going to happen to them next, and, they, and they, can't, they can't envision it. So I think one of the um, critical things and the most important things that we can do for them is to lay out a path for them. This is, this is how you can get from here to there. This is how, how you can get from where you are now to where you want to be, and that's really important.